Throughout the series, I've been guiding you guys to um, take a really hard, unemotional look at dozens of the negative behavior patterns and the mind games that men are out here running on single women. The purpose was to make those of you who don't have this kind of knowledge or experience uh, and just instantly believe what men say to you without question or proof, you know, more aware of what's going on. It's sad and unfortunate, but right now the society that we live in seems to see women not as something to cherish and protect, but instead as something to berate and assault and control and dominate. And then, of course, you know, kill and abuse and a bunch of other negative things. And these behaviors run the gamut. Um, you know, people like to say, oh, you know, it's those hood rats and, you know, those criminals. No, it's from political figures to pastors in big churches, parents to corporate professionals, men of all walks of life are exhibiting these sociopathic, narcissistic mindsets. And, you know, I mean, the proof of it is, is on every online uh, newspaper and in print. You know, on television and everywhere. I mean, you can't run away from it. You can't avoid it. And people who try to pretend like it's not happening are trying to be the ostrich and put their head in the sand. You need to pull it out. So my goal has basically been to give you the tools to screen those kind of people out of your life, to get you away from them as quickly as possible. That's what, you know, since August, the series that I've been doing, um, that's what we've been focused on because I wanted to do everything I could to empower the young women out here in the dating world. You know, if you didn't have a mom that was up on game, your daddy wasn't really around to tell you this stuff, maybe your aunts and your big sister and stuff are, you know, they, they're unaware themselves so they was getting gamed on and tricked. You know, you, you need somebody to tip you to the bullshit. And that's what, I've, that's what I've been trying to do. You know, you cannot go out here in the dating world thinking every dude that you meet is honest and that everything that they tell you is true. Because that, that's how you get set up. So basically what I want to do is, um, you know, now that you know how to avoid idiots, or at least you have a clue, you don't want to waste your time loving them. Now we're going to talk about um, what you do to pick a guy to be with. Okay, because we, we talked about what you don't want, what you want to run away from. And now we're going to kind of refocus and we're going to get you looking at what it is that you want in a man and why you want it. I think this is very important because a lot of women, um, you know, have some really twisted belief systems about what they deserve to have I mean from both ends of the spectrum one is some people have like no standards at all and then others you know just think that they have like a gold coochie or something I don't know what y'all be true y'all be tripping about what you think you deserve in a man and it's just totally unrealistic so let's talk about that the first question can a woman be too picky the short answer is yes, but let me tell you why. Now, over the years, I've done a lot of dating coaching. And there are a lot of people that are confused. I mean, the basics, like what does it mean to date? What are standards? You know, what they should be thinking about when they meet somebody. And the unrealistic expectations that they have of the opposite sex and relationships. I mean, sometimes it's sad, but most of the time it was funny. It's like, who told you that this was how you should where did you get this shit from it's amazing so um you know when you when you talk to the women though you find out that a lot of them um base their idea of what mr perfect mr right uh should be is based on movies or soap operas or romance novels they read as teenagers fairy tales they hear it as you know little children the night in shining armor and the prince on the you know white steed coming to save them and all this other stuff other women just roll with what their mother told them or what their friends told them or what they read in cosmo and others use the bible or you know some other religious text i don't know the quran quran or you know whatever they use those as, a, as their guide and others listen to anybody and everybody but themselves and that is I think one of the key problems because you know you once you get into your head you can figure out what who you are and then what kind of man will match you and like puzzle pieces um, 
one of the things I'm going to talk about in a little bit here is the women who make the mistake of looking for somebody who's like a mirror image of themselves. That is dumb. That, that, that's boring, and it, those relationships never work out. So first, though, before we get into this, because we're going to talk about um, compromise and settling. And we're going to talk about those of you who have this list of what you must have in a man, of what he can't be, that's like 167 miles long. And you roll this thing out to fight to figure out, you know, why you should reject every dude that comes across your path. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't, you know what I mean? But what I want to do, you know, ultimately rather, that you know, that, that, that he shouldn't be rejected. But what I want you to do, though, is examine what's on your list. Figure out why it's there, who told you to put it there, and if it's really necessary to be there, you know, because sometimes we form these lists when we're teenage girls and we never change them. You know, you go through life. You're not even in your 30s. OK, you, you are a different person than you were at 16 when you made that list. You can't have the exact same stuff. And so we're looking for that exact same guy. That's just unrealistic. But before we get started, I have to make a confession. You know, I'm on to confession mode. I actually hate the word compromise. I hate it with a passion. I admit that it's necessary. Don't get me wrong. I understand that. Like mosquitoes, they're necessary too in some alternate universe. But, you know, compromise is the kind of thing. I hate it because basically what you have in a situation where you're compromising is, you know, two people trying to negotiate something, right? They're trying to figure something out. And once they do, in the end, neither one of them got exactly what they want they both had to give something up and I hate that <laughs> I don't like to be the one to give anything up I don't want to do that it's a necessary evil though but that doesn't mean I have to like it okay two different things it's like when I was a kid eating Brussels sprouts you know I had to but that, that, that didn't mean I didn't that I had to like it so you know but then when you think about compromise though sometimes though um that's exactly what should be happening because like I said people be on some bullshit and they be having some unrealistic you know nonsensical uh, criteria that they're using to choose somebody with um, as I referenced in the last video uh, about you know the guy getting with the guy who could dick you down but ain't about shit if you look for sparks to fly in any relationship uh, to determine a man's rightness for you, that's just dumb. Unfortunately, this is the primary criteria that millions of women use to decide if they should be with a dude. They go by how they feel versus what, you know, engaging their brain and analyzing him. Your feelings will have your ass in a grave somewhere, you know, stressed out, worried, and, and having a heart attack or a stroke over a nigga when you need to be thinking with your brain. So let's talk about that. We're going to just go through the difference between compromise and settling because there, there is a big difference. Now, most of the women who are on my channel um, seem to be in the, from their mid-20s to mid to late 40s. And just, you know, so as you're in like the first half of that age group, you probably feel like you can be more picky. And you're probably right because, you know, by the very nature of your youthful age, you have many more years to fuck off before you come to your senses. But for women in their 30s and older, it's been around a few times, you know, been around the block a few times, some have been married and divorced, you know, they have children, they have, you know, different things going on in their lives. You understand that the number of men's, you know, sporting a six pack that they had at 25 are high, but at 45, not so many. So, you know, giving up on somebody having a six pack, that's a compromise. That's not settling. So you get the you get the point what I'm saying, you know, he's still an attractive dude, but he did, you know, you're not going to meet many 45 year old men that have a six pack. It's just not going to happen. There's some, but compared to the 25 year olds, please. Okay, another example that women, a lot of women get stuck on is the man's height. You know, we're socialized and want to be with tall dudes. I think some of that may have something to do with, you know, our ancestry or chromosomes or something, some kind of survival DNA carryover thing. 
it was, when you think about it, you know, they had to hunt and stuff, right? So they're out there, you know, in the jungle, in the forest and that stuff, stuff. Well, the tall guys could see the prey coming before the short guys whose vision was blocked by the bushes. So the tall people tended to survive and the short people got munched. <laughs> so maybe that's where they got the name Munchkins from in the Wizard of Oz. Ooh. But anyway, moving on. Um, but, you know, when you think about that, just put that in perspective. You, does a man's height have anything to do with his ability to love you? Does his having a six-pack have anything to do with his ability to care about you? His ability to communicate, his ability to provide for you and any children, the two of you that may have. What I mean, you know, I mean, I know you find that exciting or interesting or something. But again, who told you that that should be on your list? Where did that come from? So see, this this is some things I want you to think about. Then now this is the same because the same question I have to ask about dozens of other rules and you know checklist items that women have. And I think, as I alluded to earlier, a lot of women are just looking for a male version of themselves because they have stuff on their list like this. You know, he got to be attractive like me. He got to be the same religion as me. He has to like the books and the movies and the music I like. He got to have a college degree like me. He need to be a professional making over $100,000 a year like me. He has to be a non-smoker like me. He has to be the same race as me. He has to not drink like me. He can't gamble like me. He got to have no kids like me. You see what I'm saying? It's like there's no room for differences and acceptance of people that are different because you want somebody who's just like you but with a dick. That's just kind of amazing to me and I don't understand it but whatever now there's two key points to consider as on this compromise versus settling thing number one the type of guy that makes a romantic uh you know like boyfriend exciting boyfriend dating partner whatever is not usually the guy that makes a good husband there is not husband material well i'll go into that in a minute and number two I really do believe after, you know, thinking about it with all my years of experience in this in this field, that everything that we choose in a man is based on whatever our priorities are at that point of our life. I also explain that. But let me go back to point one. Now, this is the one who, you know, about the difference between the exciting boyfriend and the stable, you know, dependable husband. Women who get with that the first the romantic, exciting dude and try to marry him and try to tame him end up with their faces cracked. That's the party boy husband, the one who wants to go to clubs and have hang out in bars and drink with his boys and stuff all the damn time. They're also the ones who still dress up in jerseys and caps and sneakers at 40 and they still listen to loud hip hop music and they never help the kids with the homework and they never help with any housework and they whine about shit like a baby. That's what you marry. But he's, you know, he was handsome. He was fly. He put it down in the bedroom and you married it. See, you made a gross error in judgment right there. So, you know, um, you, you need to look for different things by the time you start trying to build a life. That's exciting shit. It's cute, but it, it doesn't, it's not husband material. And on point two, when I was talking about, you know, whatever our priorities are at certain stages of our life, um, that I think is true because just think about it. When we were young and silly, you know, we want a boyfriend who's cute and tall and has a nice car and dresses nice, right? You know, that's 16, 17, you know, 18, whatever, something like that. Then you get a little bit older and you kind of change that a little bit and you want somebody who might have those qualities too. You know, he's still sexy, he's still in shape and all that, but you also want him to have some evidence that he's thinking about his future maybe like he's in college or you know doing pro post grad work or he's working you know and saving his money to buy a house or he's trying to build a business he's probably a little bit older than you at least that's what you want and you want somebody who um, wants to have kids and settle down and who loves to travel in the meantime because kids are later then you get a little bit older than that and then you want a man who has strong family values and understands you know, he understands you. He gets you like, you know, he, he, he understands what you're saying and with how you think and how you feel. And he wants to be at your side, you know, in the trenches with you, fighting for what you two believe in and, you know, trying to get your goals together. 
But, you know, he might be a little older or younger than what you thought you wanted. Or he might be a little overweight or too skinny than what you wanted. Or he might be a different race than what you thought you wanted. Or he might be a blue-collar man, certainly not making no $100,000 a year. And so you take him, even though the only travel he wants to do is across town to visit his mother or to hit a casino. You know, now there you go. See, that's a compromise. You got the other stuff that you wanted, but you lost some of the the uh, the other criteria that I don't think are really all that important. Because if you know you want to travel, get a group of your girls together or your sister or something and go. You know, it's not going to stop you from doing anything that you want to do. You just might not be, always be able to do it with him. But you have everything else that you wanted. Would you give those things up because he didn't want to get on a plane with you? See, I mean, you got, you got to think about this stuff and put it all into perspective. So then, you know, you get a little bit older than that. And if you're still single and you still want to be coupled, you'll most likely end up with somebody that you never thought you would get with. But, you know, he provides companionship and, you know, you feel like he's, he's on your team. He got your back. He might have erectile dysfunction, a big belly. He might be balding. He might be, you know, on some medications by then. Who knows? But you let all that other stuff slide and get with this guy because this guy is Mr. Good Enough. And um, that, I think, is, you know, I'm just hitting some high points here. I'm not going into great detail because this video would be like 90 hours long. But I just wanted to give you, give you some ideas to think about the areas in which you might have been really holding fast to some things that are kind of irrelevant in the in the way that they impact a relationship and a man's ability to love you. You know, how is um, how does that really work out if you're, um, you know, you're focusing on trivial shit and and ignoring the, you know, the deeply important things like, you know, his ability to commit, his ability to respect and honor you and his ability to negotiate and compromise uh, so that you guys aren't fighting all the time. Then we come to this this question. Would most women rather be with any man, like, you know, just a man, period, versus the right man? Hmm. Uh, I think there's evidence of that. Like, I think, you know, everybody's gone through that phase where they just kind of, you know, drifted into a relationship with somebody. And, eh, you know, he was like, you could take him or leave him. He wasn't really, you know... I mean, if you saw him, it was cool. If you didn't see him, that's fine, too. And it was easy for the relationship to break up because you weren't really that invested in it. I think everybody's gone through that. Um, you know, just so that they won't be alone, a lot of women. They, they don't want to be by themselves. And then we have guys that, you know, this is another issue that um, because, because so many women do that, um, it has contributed. I'm not saying it's a sole cause, but it has contributed to the mindset that a lot of guys seem to have that they are entitled to a woman they want um, but she you know she might be at one of those ages like I was just when outlined for you where she has more options and she's not willing to settle or compromise on her dream yet you know she's still young she don't have to because she's got some more years to either get meet the meet the mr. magic or change and compromise and you know grow and, and modify her checklist to get with somebody later but these dudes get really angry that the women don't pick them. And I think what they need to do is take a good solid look in the mirror, first of all, and look at their lives and look at what they got to offer and look at how they talk to women and look at how they think about women and realize, you know, if you're a dude and you're like halfway decent looking and employed and stuff like that and you can't get a woman's attention, there is something seriously fucked up about you. With all these single women out here and you can't find one, there's a, the problem is not with them, it's you. So I don't know, you know, a lot of guys have like this undercurrent of rage that women who are sensitive uh, to, you know, the male thought processes and behaviors can pick up on and it's frightening and they don't want to be around you. And guys, you know, if you're in a situation like that, I want you to take a moment and ladies, you can do this too. assess who you are, what you look like, your body, everything, what's going on with you. And obsess uh, what's called your romantic market value. Dr. Larry Davis from down in L.A. came up with that in the 90s um, in his book called Black and Single. I don't know if it's still impressed, but I interviewed him uh, when I worked at Net Noir. 
And um, it was real interesting to see his theories that, you know, people have a value in the romantic marketplace. And some people are just high, placed higher in that, uh, in that market because of their looks, their education, their body build, you know, whatever else. Um, there may be some exotic something about them and their appearance, whatever. Um, and they have a higher value in the romantic marketplace than other people. And this is not to be, you know, a bitch or evil or a uh, racist or, you know, negative against overweight people or anything like that. It's just saying this is reality. And once you get an, ex you know, you assess your value and you know that you like say you're a five you know say you're a five right financially educationally intellectually physically emotionally you only a five okay they want to talk on a scale of one to ten so you're a five every time you try to get with somebody in the seven eight nine and definitely ten range you're going to get rejected you're going to get your feelings hurt a person who is a six might take you but you might get rejected by them too so you either have to get your RMV higher or you're going to end up having to compromise on what it is that you want and or settle. And, you know, like I said, the same thing applies to women. So by the time you're in your mid-30s, you know, you need to be making that adjustment. And uh, a lot of women do. You know, they get with a guy who even if he's like, you know, he's not really warm to them. He's not really emotional type. You know, he's not really there for them the way they might like him to be. He might be kind of boring. He might be an intellectual midget. He might have had an arrest or two in his history. He maybe has a kid or two or was divorced or something. You know, thing, all the things that women said that they didn't really want and was, it was unacceptable when they were at 25. Well, now at 45 or 55, they're a little more flexible on those kinds of things. And, you know, they're tired away from Mr. Right, so they take Mr. Good enough. And, you know, as long as he meets, um, I, I, I try to get people to focus on, on say just three things, no, definitely no more than five. So three to five important qualities that you either must have or must not be present, and then focus on those. And then you know, any you then I then try to interact with or get to know or talk to, do something, some kind of way to open yourself up to interacting with any guy that you meet who meets that, you know, that three to five standard. Of course, there's going to be other things that, you know, might pop up like, you know, he might, I don't know, be weird. I mean, you can get some weird vibe from her or whatever. That's, but still, that's not on your list. That's something that you're going to determine after you, you know, interact with him and, and spend some time talking to him. And I think, um, I think all in all, you know, understanding that there's a big difference between compromise and settling the definitions are definitely very different and I think that um, you know as we mature we have to look at the things that we think we absolutely must have got to have in the, in the opposite sex with different eyes and think really think about what it is that those things that you have on your list mean to you and really think about why they're there and think about what impact you think that sticking to those is having on your life think about if you eliminated those how much how many more dates you could get and how many more guys you could meet think about if this thing on that you have on this list is really really necessary or is it just a wish you know a wish and a hope and a dream and I think if more women did that um, openly and honestly um, getting, getting with a guy who qualifies as, quote, Mr. Good Enough might not be such a bad idea. You know, my thing is, if you want to be in a relationship and you're not, and you're not um, finding what it is that you want, there's a reason. And my thing is, it's like, you know, you got a quantity. Dating is all about quantity. So you got to roll through. As if, what's that phrase? Oh, you got to kiss a lot of frogs before you find your prince. And it's the same kind of thing. You know, a lot of singles out there, a lot of people with dysfunctions and, and bad histories and weirdnesses and all that stuff. But, you know, you'll never know that if you don't talk to them. And that's all I'm advocating is that, you know, you take the tools that I've been teaching you and you get out there with a realistic list and start trying to make some changes in your romantic life. So, you know, it's a good time of year to do that because the weather's cold, so people are going to be indoors. We're going to have a captive audience. 
So you just go to these little parties and you go to these little events, sporting events and all kind of stuff. Or you meet me in all kind of places and keep your, you know, your three item, three to five item checklist handy and use the skills that I taught you. OK, to screen out the idiots and you should be just fine. All right. Deb Cooper from survivingdating.com talking about Mr. Perfect versus Mr. Good Enough signing out.